Hi everyone, Gav here from the LFC Day Trippers, and this morning we're doing something slightly different. I'm joined by John Gibbons from the Anfield Rap, and as you may have heard, or may not have heard, um, but the chances are you have, um, they are bringing out a five-part docuseries titled Jorgen, all about the life and times of Jorgen Klopp. I've brought John on, I um, want to talk to him about it, because it looks like it's a massive job they've done. Um, from the clips I've seen, it's amazing, and um, I can't wait to watch it for one, so Gibbo, um, welcome first of all. Um, I'm not very happy with you having me up at 10am in the morning to talk about <laughs> this, um, because you know me, I'm a night owl, but um, it looks a massive undertaking that the Anfield Rap have done here. It looks phenomenal from the pieces I've seen. Um, and the fourth part comes out in a couple of hours. How excited are you for this to come out and for people to see it? Yeah, really excited. You know, it's it's been, you know, quite a mammoth task, you know, from the people sort of working on it and, and for the whole business, really, you know, for, for the last, you know, four to five months, which has been, you know, the bulk of it when it's been going on. And so, you know, a lot of work. Um is, is you know been done to, to to get to this point and you know we've seen it now and, and we're dead excited about it really pleased with it and so you know you know what it's like when you when you're really pleased with something you want to sort of share it with the world and you want everyone else to buzz off it as well and so you know that time will come at 12 o'clock and yeah i just really hope everyone everyone really enjoys it and it gives them you know a bit of an appetite for what's to come listen i i, I have no doubt people will love it um because you know, four or five months, like, you, you aren't messing about here, you haven't sat down for an hour and went, listen, let's let's make a video about Jürgen Klopp and throw it out there, you know, that's an awful lot of time, just so people know the scale of this, before we get into what's in it, four or five months, how many countries have you been in, how many people have you spoken to, you know, it must be a hell of a lot of people. Yeah, so there's 35 interviews in the whole thing at the moment, Um now, parts four and five aren't going to come out until March, so mm. there's still a little bit of time to maybe get a few more. Um, it's not it's not exactly chronological, um, but the, the the more of the Liverpool stuff will be will be towards the end, and so there's there's maybe a little bit of time. We, we've had a bit of a chat about a couple of people who've who've since left the club, basically who who we'd like to get, but so the, so there might be a few more. But at the moment, it's thirty five interviews. Um, that's you know across four different countries. So the video team went over to Germany, I think, four times in the end. Went to Frankfurt, went to Mainz, went to Glatten, which is where he's born. And you know, it's my favourite part of the whole thing. You know, the people of Glatten. You know how beautiful it looks is, yeah. is is sort of fantastic. Obviously to Dortmund as as well. So they were they were going over and. You know what it's like. You can't just turn up every, somewhere and hope <laughs> yeah. everyone everyone will speak to you. You know, you know, it's it's a case of you know people have different you know times and other they can do and things like that. So yeah, so they so they've been over four times. You know, since the summer, um, and then obviously up and down the country as well. So we did a Lalana in Brighton, which is which is you know is a is a fair old way. A few in Liverpool, which was helpful and and. You know, little things like Peter Moore is 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 based in California now, but but agreed to do it, and so we got in touch with the LA Supporters Club and shout out to them, and and they arranged to film him, and and I interviewed Peter via Zoom. It was it was late at night here, very early in the morning. Peter drove two hours into LA from from where he lives to do it, and and the the LA Supporters Club because because it's Hollywood and, 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 you know, everyone's got a camera, um, yeah. was able to sort of film that for us. So, so little things like that we were able to do with support of others. But, you know, 99% of it is, is filmed by, by our guys going and out and, and speaking to people and, and, and getting who they wanted and, and, and you know, the, the number of, of different people they've got and, and the quality of, of people that they've got, especially in Germany, is, is great. The timing of it. Is, is what interested me because I was I was over with Jews, the Southampton game two or three weeks ago, mm. um, and I dropped when I dropped into the office. It's usually bustling and there's loads of people in the office and there was hardly anybody there. And I was like, okay, Friday afternoon, it's allowed. You know, people wander off and and they were like, no, no, he's down here and she's down there and they were all in. I I I christened it the secret office because it was clearly <laughs> something going on. Like it was like a Pentagon somewhere. Um, but the timing of it. You know, it would have been easy to turn around and go, Klopp 2026, he's only announced that last year. You know, 
would it be at its absolute peak when he leaves the club and you have a complete story of something as to his whole time at Liverpool? But it's more to it than that. It's 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 Jurgen Klopp from, like you said, Glatten from where he's from, right through to today. And is it is it because we're... I think we're at one our most comfortable in where Klopp is in this club. And what I mean by that is that we're not going, will he sign, will he not sign, will he stay, will he go? We're at our most comfortable, John, where we know where he is until for the next four years. Is that was that part of the process where you go, we're absolutely comfortable where he is? Yeah, I mean it is. I mean there's a couple of things. First of all, we wanted something big for the World Cup. So mm. about a about a year ago, I sort of Neil started banging on about the World Cup and how it was, you know, what it, it was a tricky time, you know, for us because we're putting content out every day and, you know, we didn't really want to do a lot of World Cup stuff because mm. there'll be a lot already out there and, and obviously, you know, it's a bit of a controversial sort of World Cup anyway and and also with with, with the way it's been, with, you know, with the start with four games a day, you know, you put something out and it's and it's out of date, you know what I mean, before it's, before it's edited and so, and so we... We sort of thought we couldn't do, couldn't do loads in the World Cup. What are we going to do? You know, if we'd have known all this ownership stuff was going to be going yeah, on, and, and, and people people walking out left, right, and centre, yeah. then then it wouldn't have necessarily sort of been an issue. But obviously, we didn't know that, um, and so so we wanted something to be to come up, and and it was Fuad who who came up with the idea. Well, he wants to do a clock doc, and he thought that'd be really good. And we just said, well, yeah, that's perfect because. You know, you do want to celebrate the good times while they're here, and I think that's yeah. a big part of the Anfield wrap. And I know the big part of the day chippers as well is that um, it does amuse me. And in our slight side note, that there's various aspects of our fan base who've who've been, you know, while we've been winning everything, have been panicking that the sky's going to fall in, and then now it has gone wrong. Have, have, have claimed that they were right all along, and I and I and I would say no, actually, I was right to be enjoying it while it was happening. Yeah, um, rather than rather than rather than you guys who sort of you know steadfastly refused um, because you you had your eye on um, you know age profiles and midfielders, but I think you know it is the time to enjoy it, and 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 you know. You need to enjoy people while they're here, and Klopp won't be here forever. Um, I've got a sneaking suspicion he might be here a little bit longer than his current contract, but that's just that's just me. That's not any inside knowledge. But but I think you know, regardless of that, I think like you say, he's here now. He's he's the most secure a Liverpool manager feels like he's ever been. Um, you know, he's you know the times we've had over the last few years, and hopefully we're going to have over the next few years. And I still think we could have a really yeah. good season. Um, you know, is sort of there, and so and so let's celebrate him. And you know we celebrate the team, and and he doesn't like sort of too much focus on him, does it? But I think he de- he deserves it, and you know just to you know to make something so hopefully so full of love and and you know love around the world, you know everywhere everywhere he's been, you know he's made people love football more, and I think that's what really comes out the documentary for me is that you know the the first part that people are gonna well, watch the day if they choose to is all about challenges and, and it's all about the, 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 you know, the challenges he faced going into each club. And, and there's a bit of a common theme where people are saying, yeah, we were a bit fucked to be honest with yeah. you. And then, and then Jürgen came in yeah. and, you know, in our, in our first press conference, he talked about turning doubters into believers. And, you know, there's a similar sort of thing in, in, in this one. There's, there's a really good story. It's actually an episode two, which is next week where, when Klopp, turned up at Dortmund to mass scepticism by the way they were like what the fuck are we doing getting the mines manager in um you know it was a bit like us going to you know to to get a manager from I don't know Derby County or something mm. um you know he was actually he one of the first things he did was ring around all the corporate partners and, and people who would buy you know bought executive boxes and stuff like that and we're like you've not bought your you 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 not bought your box yet you've not bought your season tickets yet you need to get them it's gonna be brilliant this season and I really sold them his vision sort of down the phone and then they were like well yeah all right and you know they paid the money and 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 got and, and Klopp delivered what he what he promised to them which is what, what he always does which is you know fantastic football winning football and and and, and the start of a, a journey and and so that was sort of really interesting to me and then mines were you know, were, were really struggling again and were a bit of a sort of a nothing club and, and what he did for mines you know in, in the first doc there's someone saying that you know that he, he turned this football club into from nothing into one that you know pe- people know when you go to different places now they say oh yeah we know mines you know what I mean and that, and that was him and so so he has 
done incredible things, you know, wherever he's been, not just in terms of results on the pitch, but how he's made us all feel about supporters, how he's made us feel about our football clubs. And and this documentary is a reminder that, you know, this is no coincidence. It's all planned. Uh, and episode two is the blueprint about how he does it um, and about how he, how he changes culture and how he, he changes the mindset of a football club. And I've seen that one and that's really good and that's out next week. But, but yeah, it's... I think I've answered your question, Gav. I sort of got a one of the tangents, but you know, we are also passionate about him, aren't we? And I hope that comes across in the documentary as well. And you'll see how passionate the people of Glatton are about their most famous son. And you'll see how passionate people are from Mines and and the clubs he was involved with in Frankfurt. And that those bits are really good as well from his from his sort of playing times and also obviously Dortmund as well. You know, they love Jürgen, but Jürgen belongs to them in a way. But right now he belongs to us and how lucky we are. Yeah, he'll always be yours. They're not getting them back. Um, <laughs> <coughs> I'm, I'll fight anyone over it if needs be. But, y- y- like, you went, yeah, you did go out on a bit of the tangent there, but I'm really delighted you did because I think he's liberated Liverpool's f- support fan base. I'm going to be honest with you. And 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 I go right back to the very early days. Not so, not even so much in the in winning leagues or winning European Cups or domestic Cups or World Club Cups or whatever. It's very early. Like, that... That whole winners or, or doubters into believers thing, right, was kind of scoffed at by people outside of Liverpool. But and and there, there might have been a time, or maybe someone, if someone else said it, you would go, what, "What's this fella talking about?" Where Liverpool were at a stage where they needed somebody, they needed somebody to break them away from that bubble they were in of we haven't won a league title, and and Klopp comes in and says this, and there is a bit of Liverpool fans going, "Doubters to believers," you know, and. They're a little bit mystified, but Liverpool aren't great for the first couple of months under Jurgen Klopp. There's, there's some defeats there where you're going to go, well, but Liverpool fans change completely. Where, yeah, we've lost, but he's going to be amazing. Don't worry about it. You know, and he, he's in people's head straight away. And I think he's liberated the fan base, genuinely. You know, I still think if we hadn't got a league title by now, fans would still be behind him because of the. I, I genuinely believe that. I think he has changed the outlook of a fan base. Like I've never seen before. hundred percent, Gavin. Look, I think he did a couple of things when he came in. First of all, he reminded us all just how big Liverpool are, mm. and I think that comes out just uh, in the in the clock doc with David, David Cavana talking about, you know, there was a little bit of a oh, would we even get you in Klopp or, or a little bit from other fans going, are oh, you wouldn't get him? Do you know what I mean? And and you know, Klopp coming in and going, no, this is one of the biggest football clubs in the world, and I'm and I'm fortunate to be here, and I'm fortunate. You know, it's the old Shankly one. You know, where, you know, they, I remind these players that they're lucky to play for you, and and there's a bit of clop in 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 Shankly and vice versa, isn't there? But I think you know that's a big thing. Really, he came in and and just made us all walk a little bit taller. I think because we had sort of Jurgen leading us, and it was a, it was a big big reminder of of the size of Liverpool, and and he made us all think bigger, and he made us all remember the the way Liverpool kind of should be, really, and that's not. You know, will we get a Champions League spot or won't we? Which is sort of where we were really, and, and and maybe we'll have a decent run in it because we know we can create a decent atmosphere at home. Is 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 no actually? You know, we need to be challenging for everything, and we should be challenging for everything, and and that's what he sort of set up to do. And but I think he also reminds us all of our responsibilities as well. And there's some of those early days where yeah. he's having it out with the crowd, and he's you know there's the Palace one where he's critical, and then the West Brom one where he got a bit of stick for. But but it's been vindicated since. And I think you remind us as all of, okay, well, this is going to be a fantastic journey and I'll lead you, but you need to do your bit as well. And you need to be sort of part of that really. And the atmosphere took a jump just like it did at Dortmund. And that comes out as well, you know, this yellow wall and stuff and all like that. Like they'll say that before Yen came in, it was a load of crap. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and but he, you know, so we did it there as well, but we certainly did it with us. And I think the atmosphere has been, been much better since Yen came in, because of all the things you said, because of the, the journey we've all bought into it, but he's also, I think, reminded of one of their responsibilities as well. I think I think it's huge, and, you know, he, even when I think back now, and, you know, every October when the anniversary of, of Klopp joining comes in, he, he he actually manages to tell you that you're one of the biggest football clubs in the world, but you need to stop worrying about this big thing over here. You know, that makes makes you, makes a part of being the biggest football club in the world is winning this thing over here. But yeah. forget about it for the minute. 
let's go and be the best we absolutely can and that will sort itself out at some stage. And he was dead right because we're within three, four years he, he, he's, he's solved that issue and he's, he's going to go and look for more. I'm going to play a little clip um, of a couple of people within this documentary. Um, you see, I'm getting good at this stuff, John. Like, I'm able to put this stuff on. And I'm I very that, impressed. Uh, well, I say that before I press the button. Anything <laughs> could happen. You know, you could go on fire when I hit this button, but let's see. Here's a little clip, um, a minute or so long. Let's listen. The suspense was building and not just with myself, but the fans as well. And it was a different type of approach and it was, it was just a perfect, Marriage, wasn't it? I think Liverpool and, and Jürgen and I was excited to be on the journey. So he was always pushing and very ambitious. And yeah, for him, he was he was never really happy with the situation. He always forced to do new things. We have to be more professional. And he brought also, I would say, the vision to minds to playing first Bundesliga. Because he spoke, why not? Why you cannot uh, play first Bundesliga? And this time nobody really believed him. He's a funny guy, really. He wants to be in, in the center of things, or at least he wanted, maybe he got a little older now, but he's, he, I mean, watching him on, on, in press conferences and stuff is basically still the same guy. Um, so he wants to be in the center, he wants to make jokes, he wants people to have fun, and, and he wants to be the one uh, making them laugh. We haven't just got a top manager, we've got a special one, really, really special, and I think he's a manager we'll all be talking about in 20, 30 years' time. And, we were looking back, what did Jürgen do in this situation? What would Jürgen have said? What did he do? You know, And listen, that will be tough for the next manager. I really do believe that. Football's in cycles and right now we are having an absolute ball. So let's all enjoy it. John, <clears throat> the, when I listen to that, and, and that's, that's from the docuseries, but when I listen to that, we all love Jürgen Klopp. We try to find out as much as we possibly can. And I... I Kind of the last question I wanted to ask was, you know, what people come away with this from? And I think the biggest thing for me is coming away is one celebrating the man, um, not only for his Liverpool time, but what he's done on Mainz and Dortmund, which brings him to Liverpool. But but also, everyone I think will come away from it where they go, oh, I didn't know that, or I didn't know, oh, oh that's interesting, and it kind of adds a string to Klopp's bow in their own mind. It, will that be the biggest thing to come out of it, where people just learn a little bit more that they crave about knowing Jurgen Klopp? Yeah, hopefully. Listen, different people will take different things from it, and and I think you know if you if you want to learn more about about Jurgen, that'll certainly be in there. As I say, we go all the way back to his hometown of Glatton and and hear about you know his upbringing and how that shaped him as a person and and the kind of place that is. And there's obviously stories of him growing up, the stories of his time. You know, as a player, which 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 I certainly didn't know, and you know, not a lot of people will, and, and the stories that I'm sure are being told for the first time on on on, on video and, and recording, you know, because we have been so extensive in terms of who we've we've sort of spoken to over there, really. So I think I think you'll get everyone will get a greater understanding of the man, a greater appreciation of the man, and hopefully a greater love for the man as well, you know, if that's possible, because we all do love Jürgen but but I use the word man there a lot and, and you know, it is a reminder that you know, these are just human beings you know, doing doing a job and you know, there's a lot, there's a very strong human element you know, to, to the documentary as well, you know he just so happens to be a, a you know a very special human who can who can get things out to people that I think he, in some ways that they don't even you know realize sort of possible and and so yeah people people as I say people will get different things from it but but hopefully you know they'll enjoy it hopefully they'll I'm sure they'll learn you know they'll laugh because parts of it are really funny because of the people we've spoken to and, and their sort of personalities as well but. You know, just just a lovely, warm reminder of, of a very special man that we are very lucky to have in charge of our football club. Finally, um, where can people get this? Where can we watch? How can they access? Um, what's the timeline on, on the episodes and stuff like that? Because, listen, we could go through it all, but there's no point. It's, it look, it's going to be an exceptional documentary covering so much about Jürgen Klopp. Where can people get it? And... Wherever you tell me they can get it, I'll make sure it's in the description for our audio and um, download and for our um, YouTube video that we're going to put out. So all the information will be will be contained within however you watch or listen to this. 
Yeah, um, so episode one's out today on YouTube. Um, so that's all about the basically the challenges that, that Jürgen faced, you know, when, when he went into to each each football club at each part of his career. So that's out today on YouTube. Then next week, uh, episode two will be out. Uh, that's about the blueprint. So it's all before it about, okay, when he met these challenges, you know, how did he put the, the foundations in place to, for success? Uh, there'll be a third part out before Christmas, which is all about journey. And then two more parts in March hopefully of next year uh, which are about winning uh, which will be fantastic and about legacy as well so they'll, they'll have sort of a stronger Liverpool elements obviously but we're all really excited about it as I say part one on YouTube uh, the rest of it will be for subscribers like you said before Gav it's a massive undertaking we are mm. yep. you know a small Liverpool business you yep. know empl- employing you know, thirteen people, which is brilliant, but it's it's been hugely expensive to to do this to be going over to Germany. Even I mean, we've had some support from Erdinger, which is brilliant, and we're so grateful for them. But you know, that's been money that's been spent on things like buying rights. P- pictures are fucking expensive. Yeah, um, I've learned uh, unbelievably expensive. Video that you don't own is even more expensive. Yeah, yeah. And so, but they do really lift it. So we want to do that. So Edwin came on board and have just helped us take this documentary to another level. So we're really, really pleased. But but yeah, it is going to be for, for, for subscribers. Um, you can download the app. Uh, when you download the Anfield app app, you do get some free tokens and they'll um, allow you to watch episode two as well. So you won't need to part with any money straight away but we do hope people come on board and we do hope it encourages people to subscribe to the Anfield app uh, because it helps us do stuff like this and and stuff like this along with the day-to-day and I think that's important mate if you'll indulge me for a second because I'm really proud that that we've done this sort of in semi-secret I mean obviously we told you Gav when you were over a few weeks ago but I don't think there's been any dip of the, of the quality of the day-to-day work that we've done alongside this and that, that's that been really really difficult to keep everything going and keep the Anfield Rap juggernaut going and through a really busy period September, October, November and I have all this stuff going on as well with, with no dip in the quality of the, of, the, of, the, of the output so we're really pleased with that so, so it does sort of help so hopefully listen people come on board and um, subscribe but the first thing to do today is just to enjoy it for free on youtube enjoy part one get a lot from it then download the app and enjoy part two um next week and then hopefully uh, you'll come on board with not just this but everything that we're doing at the Anfield app yeah look the Anfield um you'll find all your links to your subscriptions whether that be audio video both of them together i know there's i think they're seven pound each for video or audio ten pound each yeah. per month for your both your subscriptions for the year. Um, they're a good Christmas present because I always hear you saying that's so I'm going to rob that, John. <laughs> um, yeah, if you go to the Anfieldwrap.com forward slash shop, it's our basically our merch store, but there's there's free and free six and twelve months gift subscriptions yes. there as well. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, so if you, if someone's saying what can I get you for Christmas, you're out to buy for well, well throw that in. Yeah, or and, and a bag of cans as well, because like, like why, why not? Um, a few cans while you're watching this documentary won't do you any harm. Look, John, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I wish you all the best with this. Um, like me and you are always joking and laughing and all this, but serious on a serious note. Um, I wish you and all everyone at the Anfield Rap all the best with this. I'm sure it's going to be ridiculously good and um, the bits i've seen are ridiculously good and if anybody's watching or listening to this the link will be in the description to get to the anfield forward slash shop and you can get your um your subscriptions but as john said 12 o'clock today tuesday the 6th of december am i right um christmas is flying in um 12 o'clock today on their youtube channel you will see episode one john it's been an absolute pleasure thanks a million tom man cheers <laughs>